I'm Dr. Pete Economo, the East Coast psychologist. And I'm Dr. Nikki Rubin, the West Coast psychologist. And this is When East Meets West. Well, just like you asked, Dr. Rubin, let's do a, a focus this episode on something really Buddhist oriented. Thank you. I did. I, I made a request to Pete. I said, I really want to learn more about koans. I didn't. Yeah. I, said, I was literally, and he's like, okay. <laughs> Let's talk about koans. Uh, yes, and I'll full disclosure, like it's not like I'm certainly no expert in in koan work or and and so maybe what I'll start with just even what you know what a koan yeah. is. We've talked about them on here, but just the way that we use them in in Buddhist um, in Buddh- I mean, how were you introduced to koans initially? Oh, by you? I didn't know. Stop I didn't. It. I, I, yeah, I didn't even know. I mean, it's interesting because it's like I. I I actually had been introduced to them before, but I, no one had labeled them as such. Like they hadn't, I didn't know that yeah. term koan, but then when you told me, oh, those are koans, I was like, oh yeah, I've been taught those before. I just, nobody called them that. Yeah. So for our listeners, I mean, koans by definition, they're um, a paradoxical anecdote or riddle. And so the way that they're used, I mean, it's one of the, some people will refer to them almost as like the Bible of Buddhism in a way. Mm. Uh, Cause it's like a, it's a scripture um, mm-hmm. or a Torah or Quran, you know, I mean, mm-hmm. it's some kind of writing that's used to, to translate teachings, which I think, you know, we know that about all religious doctrine, right? Like it's mm-hmm. all meant to teach, like it's not meant to be literal. Mm-hmm. Is that all of them? Like the Torah, well, the, I know. Well, the I think Tor- it depends. I, I think it depends on what somebody's um beliefs are because I think some some people do read certain scriptures literally um, though I think it's not incorrect to say that a lot of times they're taught as um you know yeah guides or you know metaphors or fables that kind of thing but I I do think there are some people that do read well I mean I went to Catholic school for a large part of my life it was always just taught as like metaphorical you Mm -hmm. know or or, yeah but in, in any event the koan is meant in this riddle, right? People will be like, well, how is that spiritual? Well, it's meant to like untangle the brain. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of messy because the way it untangles your brain is by tangling it. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so it's what, it's what makes it fun, but also, <laughs> but also painful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It just adds to suffering. And yeah. And so when you're going down like a Buddhist or like a meditative journey, teachers use it differently. So just as like there's a pastor or a rabbi or some, you know, there are teachers within many of the Zen or uh, Buddhist traditions, and they're just passing on Dharma, you know, and so Dharma, um, you know, is, is our teachings, you know, mm-hmm. dharma, dharma, or Dharma is like knowledge. It's, mm-hmm. you know, like if you hold Dharma, you hold knowledge. And so mm-hmm. what I'm working with, with my teacher is like, I'm somehow now classified as a Dharma holder of his teachings. Mm-hmm. You know, so I don't get all caught up in that stuff because that just feels like very sticky to me. I like how, mm. you, remember how you talk about that, like with oh yeah, sticky depression. Oh, that, oh, that was yeah. in our sadness versus depression, yes. right? Uh huh, uh huh, uh-huh. yeah. Well, yeah. So, well, things can be, emotions can be sticky, thoughts can be sticky. Yeah. yeah. And so sometimes for me, when things are very bureaucratic or like systematic, it just feels sticky to me. Feel like it sticky feels sticky to you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, and I'll say, like, like reincarnation, I feel sticky in that. Like, I do th- believe in like a, you know, personally as like a Mm -hmm. energy is reborn, Mm -hmm. but I don't know if I can pick like Johnny in the two-year-old daycare to be like, that's the reborn of like my 85 year old, like Dalai Lama. Yeah. It doesn't. Well, so it's like, there's something, it doesn't, um, it doesn't, it sounds like it doesn't, certain things don't resonate with you, which I appreciate you sharing that because obviously a big piece of, uh, of the work that, that we talk about and do is, is around psychological flexibility and just recognizing there's actually, there's no one, uh, way to do things. There's no one right knowledge, right? There's no That's one right. right teaching. So, you know, I hear you, you're saying that in the, that structure sort of being given a label just doesn't resonate with you. It doesn't feel as flexible. That's right. And so listeners like that's okay too. So, so one way, one of the most famous koans uh, and so, okay. So the way that this would work with like transferring Dharma is like you go through Dyson as a, another process where mm-hmm. what I do is I sit one-on-one with my teacher uh, and, mm-hmm. you know, you might meditate. So it could be a daily meditation or it could be like a, a session, which is like a longer sitting period. You know, maybe you do two, three, four days, seven days, whatever. And so each day during that, you sit with your teacher one-on-one to kind of t- 
like discuss what's happening mm-hmm. on the co- while you're meditating because something's always happening now yeah maybe I'm working on a koan like maybe while I'm sitting there I'm thinking about a koan mm-hmm. which is the you know riddling of of the riddling of the unriddling of the riddled mind can I ask a question <laughs> about I'm, yeah. so I'm very interested yeah. in this obviously because I asked you to talk about this today <laughs> um so if you're sitting and meditating and you're and yeah. then you're like, what's and like, what do you, and you're thinking about a con, obviously that's what the mind does. The mind tries yeah. to work on something. What would, what would your teacher say about that? Like, would your teacher say, let's, yeah, let that time be a time to think about the con or would your teacher say, notice that your mind is thinking about the koan and can you come back to the moment instead? It really depends on the teacher, but a lot okay. of teachers use koans during meditation. So they would say, yeah, this is the time for you to think about the koan. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. So, so that, that's really the purpose of it. You know, and I think mm-hmm. over time when you sit for longer periods, you realize that you're less distracted or like you're wandering less. And so you can just stick with something. Just focus on one the yeah. thing that you want to focus on. Okay, right. cool. That's and, and, and I don't always love the koan work, to be honest, because it, to me, it just feels, it's just my, it's always, it's always the individual perception. So like, the riddle, you know, I mean, what's, what's a riddle that you remember from, is there, do you have a riddle that you remember from childhood or like, what? Uh, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> aren't there riddles or like, yes, but I mean, I think that it's funny because I mean, no, I can't think of one. <laughs> I don't, I don't think I haven't thought of that in a long time. I, I, I mean, I, I do know some of, I mean, I've read, I can't even come up with one now because I'm not familiar enough with them, but I mean, yeah. I've read some of the koan, the Buddhist koans before. And I can see, I mean, maybe you could share an example because they, they are like, I'm going to use a really like grammatically incorrect uh, phrase here. They're like brain herders. Yeah, they are brain right? herders. Totally. Right? Yeah. That's why, that's why I always say about dialectics, actually. I'm always like, it's a brain herder. It's like that because they're paradoxical. It's like your brain is like, ow, what? Right. And so trying to like embrace the fact that there is the paradox that's there, you know, that, because it's always. Um... So, OK, here's a riddle what's as light as air but can only be held for a short time what i don't know it doesn't tell the answers oh god anyway uh there are uh, that's gonna gonna torture me the rest of the day just (laughs) fyi (laughs) well you'll find it you'll find the answer i'll just be googling the heck out of it online yeah any listeners know uh (laughs) write us yeah yeah Anyway, so the riddles are out there. So one of the most famous one is Joshua's dog. It's the first koan that people, um, you know, often study. Um, there are two books that a lot of Zen teachers use called the Gateless Gate, the Gateless Gate, which mm-hmm. that in of itself is like a yes. riddle. <laughs> yes. Uh huh. So I like yeah, that. I, I know, and the transmission of light. Um, so the first Joshua's dog. Uh, this is just this is the koan. A monk asked Joshua in all earnestness. Does a dog have Buddha nature or not? Joshu said, Moo. How, That's it. And Moo, but is Moo, Moo like a, like Moo, M O O, like a, like a M-U. cow sound? I mean, okay. Good question, Dr. Okay. Marvin. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, and, what so, is, and what is that? And what is M U? Well, you tell uh, me what, I mean, what, 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 oh. okay, I'm going to use you oh. as a cow. <laughs> ah, ah. <laughs> I mean, Bring it. yeah. What say, hey, uh, literary genius over yeah. there. What's <laughs> MU? What's would MU? Not call, would not call What's myself. Literary... I just I don't said, know. I'm allowed to. I, <laughs> um, would say it again. Read, read the koan again. I want to hear. I bet, I bet so, the listeners would like it too, but I would also like to hear it again. Um, well, so, so a monk asked Joshua in all earnestness, does a dog have Buddha nature, nature or not? Joshua said, moo. So that's the, that's the thing. And I'm going to come back to, yeah. You, Mu, M-U yeah, uh-huh. for you. But also like there's a, you know, there's other sort of verses that are you utilized to just kind of describe what this is. And so the uh-huh. verse as they describe it is dog, Buddha nature, the perfect manifestation, the absolute command, a little has or has not, and body is lost, life is lost. So I guess maybe what I take from that is like, Oh, I'm not going to be very eloquent about this. Uh, you don't have I can to be. feel the brain. No, I know. I'm like, I'm, I'm your, really your in the brain. I'm, my, my brain's hurting. It's like the essence of things or the essence of being or the essence of, you know, living or not living, living or, or suffering. They, not exactly. The universe, I was going to say, that's yeah. sort of my reaction. Well, to okay. It. It, okay. I mean, you should have heard what I said the first time I heard this. <laughs> <laughs> so you, well, you want to talk about eloquent. 
<laughs> well, well, in your defense, that was I've I've had some some You're always defending now. me. I know. I'm like you were like a little peanut as a person. I was like I've, I was I've had young. some I've had a, a I'm you know a fair amount of You're versed. Food. No, yeah, I'm versed. Yeah. So So anyway, moo. So MU, like what's your sense of that like from a literary perspective or what do you think they might be getting at in that? And that and that is, you know, here's the the kind of ending is like that is really the crux of this koan. I mean, I think that's how I hear it. It's like what that, like, it's like this essence of, um, it's like, I don't know, like the energy that's within all things. I mean, I sort of, that's why I'm hearing it a little bit of like, we've been, Pete and I've been talking about this off the podcast, but a little bit like the Tao, like in Taoism, which is like, you know, uh, you know, Taoism is uh, different than Buddhism, but similar in a lot of ways. And, And that's really speaking to sort of like the formless, the formless thing that's within all things that so you can't be seen, but it's always present. That's yeah. sort of like what I'm hearing, but maybe that's just being influenced no, by me reading a lot about Taoism. I, well, see, this is also where I struggle. There's no right or wrong. So that's right, how yeah, you see yeah. or hear yeah, it. That's good. Yeah. But but teachers will kind of guide you. And the, the Mu, like you just said, is the formless. It is. Okay. So it is. Okay, yeah. And it's really meant to represent formless because it's not a word. There's no, yes. there's no meaning to it. It's just yeah. two letters that come together. And the teaching is that like, it represents that, you know, Joshua at that time was um, like far removed from anything that was like any duality Mm. because Mu doesn't have duality. You know, if you say like, you know, hot, cold. Oh, cold. Oh, right. Oh, I I didn't didn't know you. My apologies. I was not in, I was Uh, not prepared for the the call and response. We have to talk to our producers to make sure we get our uh, writing better. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So that's the idea there is that like, you know, this is that, there's no form to this. And so that there's nothing, du- there's no, you can't create duality in it because as we find it's your favorite word dialectic is that most suffering is created by the dialectics that people live within. Well, well, by the, not, by not engaging in dialectic, Correct. actually, right? To be, well, to the duality be, is a, di- well, yes, by, well, or yeah, by not embracing the fact that the. But that by not embracing, a, not a, by not embracing all of it, right? A dialectic yes. is like making space for all, whereas yes. like, to like either or to your point yeah, yes exactly yeah. is where we get stuck mm-hmm. yeah so what else would you want to know about this because i think that you know leaders listeners might be tuning for the first time are like wait what is this like a buddhist <laughs> podcast is this like <laughs> religious or spiritual <laughs> well i think that you know okay so i, I mean obviously what i'm just interested i was interested in, in learning more about cons but i i guess it, since our this podcast is about the interrelationship between Eastern spiritual traditions um, and Western behavioral science or Western psychology in general, I guess what I would wonder is, you know, how like what what what's the intention then of like well I guess you've already said it about like untangling the mind right well you of think, sitting though is that where you're going with that no no I was gonna say with the cons in particular like that this yeah. is a vehicle to untangle the mind right I mean that's the way I see it I mean I I guess I should ask but I mean I think each teacher uses it differently with with the with a student so you know mm-hmm. I think if a student's coming with more suffering maybe they need you know some some more of this or less of this I mean I I have also shared that I find that most of meditation or, or, or any kind of Eastern spiritual practices is really unknowing, you know, especially as somebody who has been raised in the West where it's like, I'm trying to unlearn all this stuff that I've learned and just kind of been ingrained in my brain that has often either created duality, created suffering um, to, 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 to just see it for what it is. And that's where we just say moo. Yeah. And, you know, I think that that is something I think we could, um, bring in more fully into our work in in western psychology right yes. because because we we do i mean and again like you know in third wave cognitive behavioral therapies obviously we've borrowed extensively from zen buddhism and so there's been a lot more of that but i think this concept of like it's mu it's yeah there there isn't a lot of i mean i i i certainly weave that in as i imagine yeah. you do as well awesome. um but but i think that concept of like like you're saying of unknowing, it's like, I, I would even like take it a step further just, just to say like, you just, it's not knowing. We don't yeah. know, we right? Don't know. It's and not know. liberating. It's that's, it's, you know, you know, take, check out our uh, flexibility and freedom episode because- You're so that's, good at remembering yeah. all this. 
uh, you know, steel trap up here. You, know? you sure do have that. <laughs> I know, I know, you. I know. A blessing uh, and a curse. A blessing and a curse. It, it, tr- <laughs> it is. Let me tell you, it truly really is. Um, but yeah, no, it is so liberating. It is so yeah. freeing. And, and I think that that is something that um, is so helpful because I mean, it's helpful for a lot of reasons. It feels better, but yeah. it's if we bring it to the to the be, the the behavioral realm, it's like when there's freedom, there's infinite possibilities of what we can do, right? In it's this like beautiful. expansive and open way, where yeah. you know, when we're just thinking there's one way to do things or whatever, like we, rigidity, we, yeah, rigidity, yeah. we lose. Context well, I, that. and then also as you're talking, I'm thinking about like Mu with regard to like relational frame theory, and I think mm. that's why it works, right? Because mm. there's like very little neurological connection. And so for our listeners, we're not going to break that down right now because we don't have time. Uh, but just this very basic sense of like that words create neurological pathways and Mu does not have that necessarily. When you look at MU on the paper, it doesn't. As a sound, it might. Because mm-hmm. if I say Mu, people might visualize a cow. Well, that's what, it, well, in, in English, well, I mean, I don't know. You know, in every language, sometimes it's like a little bit of a different sound. Like I remember when I was in Spanish class, it'd be like a little like barking was like, <laughs> I think it was like guac guac or something like that. Like that was the thing. And I'm like, Oh, cool. Like, anyway, yeah, but yeah, yeah. So to English speakers, that's, that's why I asked you that. Cause that's yeah. what I heard. I was, I, you, you heard know, Emma. Um, I, oh, I, I, oh. I, yeah. Yeah. That's what I heard. Um, yeah. Well, and I guess to just gently say relational frame theory, since Pete dropped it, we we're like, well, it, it's basically saying language is, um, there's sounds and symbols that our brain makes, uh, associates with things in the physical world. That's right. Right. And so, yeah, when there's no association with MU, there's a there's space to see like what do you connect with yeah yeah that's so let's thank you for tuning in and trying to at least take this journey of a koan and maybe you're going to work on that riddle for the rest of your day your night or the rest of your lifetime this has been when east meets west i'm dr pete economo and i'm dr nikki rubin be present be brave This has been When East Meets West. All material is based on opinion and educational training of Drs. Pete Economo and Nikki Rubin. Content is for informational and educational purposes only.